Let's pray together. Dear God, may your spirit be with us. Open our ears, open our mind. Let us receive your teachings. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Today is the Pentecost Sunday, which is also the birthday of the Christian Church. Pentecost is the day to emphasize the power of the Spirit of God. The passage of S is one of the few readings assigned for every year of the lessonary cycle which emphasizes its significance in the life of the church. Pentecost, seven weeks after Passover on the liturgical Canada, is a significant event because it is traditionally linked to the giving of the law. The disciples had been instructed to wage for the promise of the Father, when they would be baptized with the Holy Spirit and received power when the Spirit came upon them. At that point, they were instructed to be Christ's witness in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. Some have seen the Pentecost event as a sort of reversal of the confusion of languages that took place at the Tower of Babel in Genesis, Genesis chapter 11. Perhaps better read, however, Pentecost does not so much reunite all languages and cultures as enable that diversity to be witnessed. As persons understood what was being said, the Alpha of S indicates the movement of the story of Jesus into all the world through references to multiple peoples and cultures. S tells the way the gospel was carried to Corinth, Antioch, and Philippi and even to the Gentiles. As a result, Pentecost is the beginning of universal evangelism. The reading from 1 Corinthians reminds us that this one spirit or breath is a creator as in Genesis chapter 1 verse 2. It's not a destroyer or a corner. Through the power of the Spirit, each language is transformed so that it proclaims the marvels of God. This also shows that there is no one, no one sacred language in Christianity. Or we may say, all languages are sacred. And what is even more amazing about the gift and power of the Spirit, as each individual and community becomes more perfectly itself, so the whole community of the Church becomes more perfectly and fully itself. As Paul emphasizes in the readings from 1 Corinthians, there is a variety of gifts but always the same spirit, working in all sorts of different ways in different people. In fact, Paul believes that the giving of the Spirit on the day of Pentecost and the gifts of the Holy Spirit have a very specific effect. They bring about the unity of the body of Christ because the churches in Corinth are a mess. 
they are divided and unmanageable. Only two decades after Jesus' death and maturation, the Christian communities in this great cosmopolitan center are a confused chaos of competition. The Corinthian Christians were competitive and dismissive of other Christians. They particularly prized their tongues, their glossolalia, that's it, heavenly language given diversely by the Spirit, and thus is not a long human language. Nonetheless, despite what whatever shining this patent presented, the primary token of the in enduring spirit, the essential evidence that one is truly spiritual, is not gosolalia, but love. A gift of the spirit can be anything we do easily and well and choose to share for the common good. Our gifts are marked by both our individual joy and community need. Gifts are not a hierarchy of achievements or a proof of faith. A gift of the spirit is not something earned. Paul tells the Corinthians that their spiritual lives and actions are not about personal worthiness or effort, but pure gift, the result of grace, desire, and activation of the spirit. They are simply part of who we are. I remember when I was studying in the University of Wulongong in my younger age, that's 20 something years ago. I once joined an event organized by, by the Overseas Students Fellowship. The pastor there called us to be baptized with the Holy Spirit. I could see people going out to reply to her calling, they could speak in tongues. However, I did not feel comfortable at that time. It was my first time to participate in such charismatic event. The pastor, later then, banged us, banged the doors, Paul did not reply to her calling for the baptism with the Holy Spirit. She, she said that you are not a Christian if you are not baptized by the Holy Spirit. Is it the truth for the Christianity? I don't think so. Speaking in tongues is not the only gift from the, from the Holy Spirit. People who do not speak in tongues do not mean that they are not baptized with the Holy Spirit. That was a really bad experience for me. And from then, I have never been attending any charismatic event. But I still have friends from, from the Pentecostal churches. I respect them as we need to allow diversity. I grew up in the Methodist Church in Hong Kong. I always see myself as a Methodist. Within the Methodist Church in Hong Kong, we, we always have a long official slogan, which is, in Methodist, we are one family. Regardless of which Methodist congregations we attend, we see ourselves from the same church. Whenever there is any congregation in need, 
people with the relatives, relative gifts from other congregations will go and hell. Even now I'm in United Church, I still keep this mindset that regardless of which congregations, we are one family. This is why after I became an accredited lay preacher, I love going to different congregations to preach. I love making use of my gift for our family, not just for my home congregation. That's the same case applied to my wife Vivian. As she came here, came here to pay piano for the Sunday services before. We do not need to see flames of fire or hear each other speaking in tongues to know the Holy Spirit is among us. Paul teaches us that the Spirit works among us through our gifts and relationships. We are one body in Christ, each with gifts from the Spirit to use together in proclaiming the Gospel. The gifts of the Spirit are gifts. It's not a checklist, not a spiritual Olympics requiring training and giving medals, or the best of the best. They have to be used for the common good, not for us alone. No one gift is more superior than others. My gift of preaching does not mean that I am better than any of you. Gifts can bring diverse and differing people together in friendship, Jews or Greeks, slaves or free. Pentecost can continue in our lives as individuals and communities as we allow the Holy Spirit to work in and through us, declaring that Jesus is Lord and making his love known to all, even in the face of violence and lies. Amen.